Welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to uh, start the, this workshop around lighting up open rooming for European municipalities. Today uh, we'll cover deployment success studies. Uh, we have uh, as guests for our uh, workshop today, Aptilo Network, City Mesh, Cisco, Comscope, uh, the city of Tervuren and the city of Olne. Uh, my name is uh, Brunt Maas. I work as the Program Director for the Wireless Broadband Alliance. And over these last months, I've been working with all these campaigns um, to make uh, a success of, of open roaming in, in Europe. Uh, we have prepared an agenda that uh, brings a blend of uh, architecture, live deployment, a few demos. So you really experience uh, what is now available in the cities and soon available also uh, next to your location, we hope. Uh, so we'll just provide a quick overview on open rooming technology and the context of the project. Uh, then we'll uh, delve into explaining the live deployments in the city of Tervuren and uh, Osktamp. Uh, we'll then talk about Shot Fontaine and Olne, what were the achievements of this initiative and next steps for the industry. Um, so I propose we, we start uh, with the, the initial topic. And uh, for this, I would like to invite the WBA CEO, uh, Mr. Tiago Rodriguez, to just uh, provide us the context and talk a bit about why this is so important for us as an alliance, an alliance and to all the industry. So Tiago, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Bruno. Uh, fantastic uh, to be here on this workshop. Welcome everyone. I hope you find the workshop useful um, because uh, I believe it's it's very interesting. First of all, just a few a few words about WBA. So the Wireless Broadband Alliance WBA, as we call it, is uh, is a trade uh, association. Uh, we have a series of members uh, supporting the alliance, uh, and we have this vision of bringing seamless and interoperable services. Uh, on Wi-Fi um, networks, but always uh, in uh, convergence uh, and coexistent with other uh, wireless uh, technologies. We we want, in terms of objectives for the Alliance, we want to massify uh, the interoperability between Wi-Fi uh, networks and roaming. Uh, we want to accelerate uh, better networks, uh, either with Wi-Fi 6, with the uh, Wi-Fi 6C, that's the 6 gigahertz spectrum, but as well, any new functionality that can improve uh, the capacity uh, of Wi-Fi. At the same time, uh, we want to make sure that Wi-Fi works uh, properly with either um, wireless technologies, in, in particular with 5G. So make sure that 5G and Wi-Fi 6 can work uh, end by end. Uh, and the topic of today, open roaming, uh, is a key substantial enabler of, of that convergence. Uh, as I said, we are uh, uh, an alliance um, based on, on membership. We have more than 120 members. We run a series of projects based on, on the interests of our members. We have our uh, events to promote the work uh, that we run in the alliance. Uh, and we have a series of marketing activities to promote not only our members, but the work uh, that we all do together. So regarding the, the public uh, Wi-Fi for municipalities uh, and, and the main topic of this workshop that is the, the open roaming. Today, as you can, and as we all know, there is uh, substantial challenges on, on the public guest Wi-Fi experience. So whenever we connect in a coffee shop, in a municipality, in a shopping mall, we connect with Wi-Fi, we always have uh, one of these uh, challenges, if not all of them at the same time. So we're never sure if we are secure or not, if the Wi-Fi it's, it's secure enough for us to connect. Uh, sometimes it's it, there are a lot of pain to connect with Wi-Fi, so the user experience is not very friendly, either because there is a, a portal to register or it's required to send a message to someone. Uh, and on the cases that we manage to connect, uh, we never know uh, the quality of the Wi-Fi that we are going to get. So 
sometimes, uh, yes, the quality is really good and we have a fantastic experience, but sometimes it's a very poor experience. So there is a lot of uncertainty uh, around it. Uh, and the other challenge is about coverage and capacity. So we never know if uh, that location has the right coverage and can deliver the right services. And this creates uh, lots of frustration and fragmentation on the market. Uh, and uh, we uh, believe that this experience based on shared passwords or even fully open access networks brings a lot of uh, fragmentation and, and do not uh, deliver uh, the experience that we in WBI would believe would like to see. Many, many of us and many companies have tried to solve uh, this security and authentication and onboarding process in isolation. So different mechanisms, either using social media networks to connect or use one time username password or request SMS from someone. So it's, it's very frustrated to all of us as users because we go to, through these different hotspots and each of them has a different experience. We never know what to expect from, from a Wi-Fi network. Uh, when we go on these public locations. Uh, so in WBI, a uh, couple of years back, we started a program uh, to solve uh, this issue uh, and, and working in terms of interoperability roaming between networks. And we believe now is time uh, that we turn the page and we make the public guest Wi-Fi experience much more simpler and secure for everyone. So whenever we go, we are safe and we feel comfortable and it's easier to connect to the Wi-Fi. And for that, we set up uh, a federation uh, that is called Open Roaming. Uh, and I will request my colleague Bruno uh, to present you in detail uh, what is the Open Roaming, how can you be part of it, and what are the benefits of this federation. So thank you, everyone, uh, and over to you, Bruno. Yes, thank you so much, Tiago, for, for setting the vision for what all of us have been doing uh, along this uh, very busy year. Um, and, and I think uh, on, on that note, Tiago, uh, our program in the WBA uh, spans across many areas. And uh, we work uh, collaboratively with our membership. And as you can see, uh, we have work under these different work groups. So one more around next gen and wireless technologies, including 5G, IoT, Rooming, testing and interoperability, uh, policy and regulatory affairs. Uh, but what we realize in terms of the importance that uh, Tiago alluded to is that Wi Fi interoperability and roaming uh, is really transversal to many of the work we do. And it made perfect sense for us to come together uh, and deliver a program that is open roaming that combines some of these assets and really solves the problem to the industry. Uh, if you are interested in other topics uh, that you see here on this uh, on this roadmap, uh, feel free to go into our website. Uh, we have detailed information for each project uh, and reach out to us, the staff, so we can um, just schedule some time to guide you through other activities that the Alliance uh, puts forward. Okay, but uh, delving into the, the open rooming, how does it work? So really what we needed in this industry was an abstraction layer that could scale and facilitate all business models in a more efficient manner. So if you look into the identity provider side, uh, all of them now, they have a way to join uh, through an automated uh, mechanism. Um, then on the, on the right-hand side, the network providers, they also join. So we created mechanisms and leverage technology that allow them to do that in a graceful manner. And once they are both inside the federation, there are automated policies that allow all these identity providers to roam into the network providers. So seamless, secure, and simple. And in the end, we hope that this consortium really you know, covers a huge footprint all over the world and that we just deliver this new user experience. Um, okay, so as Tiago mentioned, the vision. So we hope that uh, after uh, years of uh, making great strides into resolving the problem, we now standardize all Wi-Fi onboarding and roaming, uh, either on settled or settlement-free networks. So this doesn't mean that you cannot in the future charge for it. So there are ways that the teams and our standards group, as you will hear later, are addressing this problem. 
But just in a nutshell, the dimensions of open roaming. So we really take security seriously. So we have a cyber security service that comprises a PKI infrastructure and a way for RATSEC technology to allow uh, scalable interconnection. Then we have what we call the cloud federation. So that's the combination of all the policies, double BIDs, uh, and our RIC standard that standardizes the exchanges between the partners. And finally, network automation. So that component gives the necessary codes for the networks to broadcast that match the policies on the device uh, and an underlying technology is Passpoint that is widely available uh, since around 2012. So really massified both on the device and infrastructure side. Importantly as well to mention the legal framework. Uh, so open rooming is compliant with GDPR. So all the partners have to sign a privacy policy and end user terms. Um, and if they don't do it, that's the rationale of a federation. Unfortunately, they have to leave. So this really brings some peace of mind to all of you that own networks and would like to uh, just eliminate this concern on what users might be doing if you don't control, uh, you know, from the get go their, their identity or if the network was open in, in the past. So quite good news, I imagine, for our, our European uh, friends and, and all the municipalities around, around Europe. Um, and later we'll have our workgroup chat also talking a bit more about, about this. Okay, so with this context, I think uh, something important to us is the WBID component. So this ID is uh, unique for each of the, the companies engaging with open roaming. You can get one directly through the WBA or you can use an ecosystem broker. So there are many ecosystem brokers that we are working on so that they are, they are members. Uh, and this ID became mandatory for Wi-Fi roaming services starting this year. So our board approved that everyone exchanging data and exchanging information, they should uniquely identify themselves. So you always know where your users are if they are doing roaming outside of your country um, in, for instance, international scenarios. So yeah, I really recommend that uh, you look into more information regarding WBID uh, and you work with us to get, to get yours. So with this short uh, introduction about uh, open roaming, I would like just to now make the bridge with the, the scope for today's workshop. Uh, there is some of the deployment studies over in, in Europe. Um, so on this slide, you can see the global architecture that, uh, that is enabled. Uh, this tries to bring together different sets of players. So different vendors, different ecosystem brokers, uh, different IT integrators, and uh, between all of them, working specifically for their city, they allow a dynamic uh, introduction of, of, of roaming and identity management. So this means that if you go from one city to the other and you bring your identity from your university or from your hotel or from your cable operator, you should be able to use it across the board throughout Europe. Um, and every single deployment followed the specific path. There were Tiger teams driving these projects. I must say that this was quite effective and fast, which is good news. So it's not something that you need to allocate the full project team to do. Um, and then the companies will share more with you on, on how much effort uh, it's needed uh, to really realize the vision of open roaming, uh, in this case, here in, in Europe. So with no further ado, I would like just to uh, start uh, with uh, our our agenda, um, and for this topic, uh, we'll delve into the live deployments in both the city of Tervuren and Uskamp. Okay, so I think with this, it's about time that we jump into the real action that uh, all our esteemed speakers and, uh, and and panelists performed in in Belgium. Uh, so with this, we start with the live deployment in the city of Tervuren and uh, Ux Stamp. Uh, and to get us started, I will invite Mr. Dennis Rondle from the city of Tervuren uh, to provide us a brief notes about the city and their plans around Wi-Fi and, and open rooming. So Dennis, thank you for joining and uh, over to you. Yes, hello, good afternoon, everybody. So this is our city hall in Tervuren. Um, it's a nice building, <laughs> and if you could go to the next slide, please. We are quite, uh, we started with the project uh, for Wi-Fi for EU. Uh, I think one of um, 
a number of pilot uh, project, projects uh, in, in, in Belgium. Um, so we started early in 2019 with our partner CityMesh, who was in that case the most important or the most convenient uh, partner we could choose. And we started with uh, three sites, so we could provide an open Wi-Fi to our citizens. Um, currently, we have grown a bit. Uh, Terveren is offering now free Wi-Fi in almost all uh, public buildings. Uh, we are about now seven sites. There are some schools, there are some uh, sport infrastructures uh, in, the, uh, in, in several uh, ways. Well, I should say seven sites are, are available now. Every new site uh, is currently evaluated. The city has bought some other uh, sport infrastructures, so it, it's a growing project in our in our community. Um, we are a bit different than than other other cities, I think, because we have in Terveren 109 different nationalities. Why is that? We are a bit the sleeping commune for close uh, for uh, EU uh, headquarter um, people and embassy personnel. We're quite short to 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 all of these sites. And yes, uh, Brussels Centre of Brussels is about uh, five or six uh, kilometers. So we have an extensive. Uh, nationalities and open roaming yes it's it's easy when somebody goes home and he, he can connect in in all of the european community with the same id as he did in in, in this city where he lives now in Terveur. and so we are always looking yes uh, how how this project is growing and uh what what uh, what Terveur can do uh, for europe too so we we set up uh with some other cities as, as this as a test project. So, uh, yeah, that's about it, I think. So uh, over to you again, or should there be any questions? Yeah, thank, thank you so you much, much Danny, for your uh, kind presentation and for bringing City of Tervuren uh, into the forefront of innovation in, in Europe. Quite impressed with the 100 plus different nationalities. Uh, and I imagine because of this and so many identities coming into your Wi-Fi infrastructure, you regard security really seriously. So, Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, very good. Thanks for kicking us off. Um, and, uh, and with this, I think we are uh, ready to move on to the, the next uh, speaker. So I would like to invite uh, Siri Mesh, Ivan, uh, to provide us the IT integrated perspective working closely with the officials and uh, how they see also open roaming uh, evolving and uh, how this impacts their, their portfolio. So, Ivan, uh, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you, Dennis, for these kind words. And thank you, of course, for allowing us to present City Mesh as an operator integrator uh, in, this, uh, in this fantastic presentation. Um, allow me to quickly introduce City Mesh so we have a, 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 a reference frame to work for for the next couple of minutes. Huh? Tervuren, as uh, Dennis so kindly mentioned, is indeed one of the pilot projects we, uh, we established together in the Wi-Fi for EU project. City Mesh is a Belgian operator integrator, and uh, since 2006 we've been building a high-level, um, high-density wireless networks. When we all were hauling around six kilogram laptops with a LAN connector, we already envisioned future connected cities and were able to deploy along the Belgian coastline the first wireless access point. Um, whatever we do is based on five intrinsic values. You see them in front of you. Allow me to just quickly uh, highlight two of them. Whatever needs to be done, let's do it in all fairness. Not everybody is as privileged as we are. The, the current global pandemic has shown us that a lot of people still suffer, still, still uh, struggle to get by. Um, it is very important that we, our partners, kind of represented here, and the municipalities we work with, uh, all understand that this is the basic value of whatever we want to do. It needs to be fair for all those involved. And that is, of course, a direct link to Wi-Fi for EU and open roaming. Those who are less privileged need to have the connectivity, which has become a basic need for all of us. 
is, is uh, the standard on which everything else involves. Another small, small step ahead, uh, next level, of course, I'd say, uh, we, our reference case is, uh, is what our kids teach us. They're being very quiet in the room next door because they have access to Wi-Fi. And whenever we go on holiday, their first question is not, will the weather be good or will the people be nice? No, they ask, Daddy, will we be able to connect our iPads to the Wi-Fi network? That is exactly why we need to stay sharp and focused, and that is value number one. Whatever we do needs to be done in order to develop the network further. If you'd be so kind, Bruno. That's the one. We are techies. The boys and toys. Um, we love our toys, and you see them here. We have um, unique technology at our disposal, unique spectrum at our disposal, and it allows us to run through the whole frequency range from 5G, 5G to LP ones that you see there in the middle, towering over all of it, all, everything else, is of course Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, the new standard to come in connectivity. As an operator, as a Belgian operator, we're very glad to be able to proceed in this, uh, in this project, and we're very glad that the Wireless Broadband Alliance has, has um, invited us to experiment. Later on, you will see uh, one of my colleagues driving through the city of Tervuren, connecting his mobile phone to the open roaming in the Wiki4EU um, uh, uh, network. Um, we can only develop these toys in strong partnerships. That means that we're grateful for the partners uh, presenting themselves here today. Uh, on top of that, we, uh, we use our own in-house built platforms and tools. And if you'd be so kind to go to the next slide. All these tools we develop, we don't develop for ourselves. We have a couple of, uh, of markets of which, for one, I'm with the manager, this being government and public. Um, Wi-Fi 4EU is our core business. Up till today, we have uh, converted 50 vouchers from municipalities into newly adapted networks. The city of Tervuren being here uh, presented here, and Ostkamp, our own um, our own base, which is also our sandbox. Within these two cities, we're experimenting, we're trying, we're learning, and we're developing the open framework further and further. Uh, so far, with a lot of success. There's lots and lots more to come. We're strong advocates for the Wi-Fi for EU project. Um, if you were to to look at the the, the map of Europe, you'll see. Uh, black triangle in the middle being Belgium, of all the municipalities that have secured one of these vouchers. It is not only because we understand the need for, for, uh, for wireless, it is also because we keep pushing towards a connected world. We are dreaming of a, of a one world, one connected um, environment where nobody is left behind. And if you'd be so kind. To, in order to access all these data, we have an in-house developed platform, which is called Wi-Fi Lab, where uh, our, our partners, our vendors, um, aggregate their data. And it, uh, it allows us to participate, to have interaction with the municipalities, and to show them the, the power of a, of a, a large Wi-Fi network. In 2013, we deployed a then unique Wi-Fi network in Antwerp with over 210 access points. That has become today's standard. The, the voucher, that the 15K that the municipalities can use in the Wi-Fi 4U project is there to help them along to make sure that, once again, no one is left behind. And it should be so kind. In conclusion, we do believe, in all fairness, in a very different approach and very open systems. Um, let's co-create. Let's keep it people-centric, as we mentioned under there, and let's Absolutely make sure there's room for integration from everyone. An open source means an open source. It's not a partially open source. You know, let go all out. Let's make sure there's no vendor lock-in, and let's respect or create, and create the standards we need um, to allow these existing environments to fully develop and to allow, finally, uh, what is truly uh, a metropolitan area network. Once again, thank you for having us over here today. And if anything at your service, don't hesitate to get in touch.
Yes, thank yeah. you so much, Ivan. Quite quite inspiring, and and again, uh, learning from the Belgium experience. You clearly have a, a larger mission, and I'm sure that expansion will come um, as, as faster than one would would think. And yes, thanks also for recording the video. I think in these workshops is always nice and uh, useful for the audience to have a grasp on uh, the real enablement. So allow me just to uh, to share here the the video that in fact was recorded. Uh, in, in the city. So let me just see if I can run it. So this is around uh, the city of Oxford, as we can see in the GPS, and the device coming by car connected automatically to open roaming. So that's the end game. So it's simple, not uh, a big uh, showcase in that sense, but that's what we are looking here. Absolutely. Okay, again. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, sharing your contacts, and, and I'm sure that uh, if someone would like to, to get in touch and, and learn more, uh, they will they will do so. Okay, so let me back into the, the presentation and our flow for today. Um, so right now, after we had these real experiences from our colleagues uh, based over in, in Belgium, uh, I would like to, to switch gears and invite the, the innovation teams from, from WBA members that were involved in this project several weeks, in fact, several months trying to get the, the architecture in place uh, to support this infrastructure. Uh, and, and for doing that, I would like to, to invite uh, Comscope Records in, in the person of the, the CTO, Rajesh, um, to share more on what they did. So Rajesh, allow me to hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, th thanks, Bruno. Uh, let me just share the content and uh, I'll get started. Um, so I, I want to start by thanking both the city and uh, city of Tervuren and uh, city mesh for um, uh, allowing us to participate uh, along with them uh, in uh, this open roaming initiative. Um, I've been in Wi-Fi for over 15 years, and uh, uh, and I share the passion uh, expressed by both the, the both Dennis and even in in making Wi-Fi easy to access and openly available, especially in these times. So it's both professional and personal for me. Uh, it, this this activity, and um, I'm uh, excited and inspired uh, by what was said before. Um, uh, with, with that, let me just give a brief introduction of both uh, who Comscope is and, and then uh, for, for those who are not uh, as familiar with Comscope and then uh, give a brief introduction of Ruckus and then we'll jump into um, how that demo that, that was shown, the short video clip kind of maybe behind the scenes of what, what hap what's happening um, in terms of open roaming uh, to, to make this uh, seamless connectivity happen. So briefly, Comscope uh, provides a range of solutions in the enterprise. Um, uh, we provide cabling solutions in terms of um, copper and fiber, uh, contributing towards improved connectivity inside the enterprise. Uh, we'll talk a lot about the Wi-Fi in the next slide, but in addition to Wi-Fi, we uh, also have uh, LTE solutions in the form of DAS and a small cell solution. And then um, in addition to public uh, LTE 5G solutions, we also have a private LTE solution. Um, and then to manage all this, we have a infrastructure management solution that enables the enterprise to manage this in a unified dashboard. Um, Ruckus itself um, uh, was um, uh, was acquired by Comscope about two years ago. Um, Ruckus is a, a well-known name with an established brand in Wi-Fi, uh, especially in public Wi-Fi and uh, in the hospitality space. We have a, a wide range of, uh, a, a wide portfolio in terms of Wi-Fi solutions, um, ranging from access points, switches, management uh, entities to manage the Wi-Fi access points and switches, and then value-added services on top. Um, I won't go through all of them, but briefly, just to give you an idea, it's a, it's a wide range of solutions in terms of Wi-Fi spanning indoor, outdoor, uh, special uh, special access points which have integration with uh, wired ports as well as um, um, in some cases integration with um, LTE for uh, cellular backhaul, for instance. 
Um, and and um, and we have brought some of this to bear, um, this this sort of depth of portfolio um, and our industry um, expertise to bear uh, in this uh, particular uh, open roaming initiative. Once again, thanks for um, uh, allowing us to participate. We're excited to be here. Um, let me just briefly kind of give you a, a sort of a pictorial view um, so that the audience can uh, get a look of uh, what's behind the scenes in that in that sort of that short video that we saw where the person was holding a, a phone and uh, was able to sort of connect to a, a Wi-Fi uh, service without really doing much, if you will. Um, in terms of what's the infrastructure needed behind um, uh, um, as as uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we have City Mesh providing Wi-Fi service. Uh, we have Ruckus access points there, and then uh, in a data center, we have the smart zone controller. That's essentially um, an entity that manages these uh, Wi-Fi access points. We have partnered with Aptilo, and I'll briefly sort of explain the role of this functionality. And then um, the 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 floor for Open roaming is um, in terms of uh, enabling seamless connectivity and across different Wi-Fi access um, pro access venues is the notion of having a federated identity. In this case, um, the identity providers uh, being used in this particular deployment, uh, it, or at least the first aspect uh, that we have actually been successfully demonstrated is Google. And um, we have um, a, a secure connectivity from the um, the location where Aptilo is hosting uh, their fun functionality to uh, the Google servers where the identity is stored. Uh, very briefly, sort of the, the steps behind what happens here is um, the Wi-Fi access points advertise their capability to support open roaming. Okay, and it's a it's a, a well-known signature um, that is uh, well, that has been uh, standardized by WBA. The phones themselves, in this case, the Google Pixel, has been programmed to recognize this the signature. Uh, the user does not necessarily have to manually enter anything uh, to enable this. So the Google Pixel recognizes the signature and attempts to connect to any any venue where the signature is advertised. Now at this point, the back end takes over. The, the request will be forwarded securely from the access point through a infrastructure to the identity service provider. And, and, and this is, it, and it uses a combination of technologies that exist already along with new technology that is developed and standardized um, uh, by WBA, working with uh, industry partners such as us. And then finally, a secure connection between the, the user's device and the access point and all the way back to the back end is established. Um, just to sort of wrap this up, the key benefit as we see is that um, going back to the earlier mission of enabling Wi-Fi, uh, enabling Wi-Fi access uh, in a more secure and easy manner, we are uh, extremely sort of uh, excited about the opportunities that open roaming brings to the table in terms of being an industry standard for enabling this. And we are also sort of excited by the kind of the uh, by the interest shown by venues such as uh, the city of Tervur and Francis. I'll, I'll stop here. And uh, if you have questions about what what has been done, what's coming, uh, please reach out to us, and we'd be happy to uh, work with you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Rajesh. Good to see what the architecture behind uh, all these uh, all these enablement. Uh, and yeah, so I, I know that took uh, several of your, of your team members and also Comscope colleagues uh, based in Europe. Um, and I think we have a winning team, at least for Wi-Fi for you. That uh, yeah, anyone working with uh, with uh, with Comscope in this case, there is a solution for you. And uh, the objective is to massify this now to to other countries. So as Rajesh mentioned, please contact us if uh, you work with uh, with uh, with Comscope and you would like to to get involved. Okay, so. Thank you.
with this, I think we, we can move forward. Let's continue. And uh, to make sure we have all the pieces coming together, I would like to invite now Aptilo Networks, uh, Jonas uh, Bjorklund, uh, CTO, uh, to provide an overview or now we can get uh, eventually all this plumbing coming together um, and also scale up open roaming uh, from the perspective of an ecosystem broker uh, working with a multitude of, uh, of vendor OEMs and, and municipalities. So, Jonas, over to you, please. Uh, Aptilo Network is the number one provider of Wi Fi service management solutions for primarily large-scale Wi-Fi networks. Uh, and, and we also provide IoT connectivity services around the world. Um, we uh, can deliver a solution both as a software solution and as a cloud solution to, uh, to our customers. Uh, we're a global company with uh, customers around the world, uh, some 100 plus deployments uh, that we've done around the world uh, using our service management platform product. Uh, many of our deployments are with operators, service providers around the world, where we also have delivered directly to different types of enterprises, different types of verticals, uh, also governmental organizations uh, and smart cities and so forth. Uh, where the solution is being used to provide Wi-Fi services and, uh, and deliver uh, the solution they need for uh, operating those services and, and the, uh, the management. Uh, when people think about Wi-Fi, quite often you start thinking about the access point. Uh, there's many times an access point controller either deployed locally on premise or, or as a cloud controller. Uh, and a gateway function uh, either in the uh, controller itself or as a separate gateway function in some cases. Uh, and what Aptilo does on top of that is turning that Wi-Fi network into a service, adding the access and policy control, uh, controlling the data usage, what, what should be allowed for a user to access and, and what volumes of data should they do uh, be able to, to consume. Uh, we also take care of the user onboarding, making sure that users easily can connect and that the site owners are, you know, have an ability to communicate and, and onboard users as they, as they wish. Through, for example, captive portals and, and other mechanisms. Uh, from this Wi-Fi network, there's also, of course, a value of extracting analytics and sharing that in a multi-tenant fashion, both from, from a service provider perspective, but also with the site owners themselves so that they have access to, to insights about uh, the network and their, their users on the network. Uh, so a very important part is, of course, the multi-tenant aspect of, of these Wi-Fi networks and the services that, that run on them. So with uh, uh, open roaming, Aptilo has been uh, a, a supporter and, and a part of that initiative with WBA uh, since, since the early beginning, since the very beginning of it. Uh, and, and our solution fits right in to, to provide yeah, both the, the site onboarding, uh, but also onboarding the users and providing the inbound and outbound roaming for users uh, uh, when connected to, to the open roaming footprint. Uh, and in the future, hopefully that's something that will grow, obviously, that more and more uh, operators and site owners and different organizations will be part of the open roaming initiative and the open roaming functionality. Uh, and then in that role, the, the solution from Aptila also provides the, the, uh, the other features that I talked about initially for, for the uh, operator of the network and the uh, different site owners. Uh, and a key component is, of course, to, to make, in order to make this scale, to, to make it all automated uh, uh, so that it's a self-serve, easy, uh, easy to use uh, onboarding, both for the uh, site owner that wants to uh, you know, connect his site to this service, uh, but also for the end user that wants to onboard the, uh, you know, the device that they're using in, in an easy way uh, to get access to um, yeah, both the local network where they're at, but, but in the case of open roaming also that, that extended footprint and, and you know, automatic authentication using Passpoint with, uh, with their device. Um, and in this particular trial, we've been working uh, together with uh, Comscope uh, with the Ruckus equipment 
uh, uh, to begin with, at least. That's, that's the one we've done. Uh, and uh, we worked with the city of Terburen, uh, where uh, the ruckus equipment has been integrated, connected to our service, uh, which in then in turn is connecting to the open roaming service for uh, different types of devices to connect. Um, and the other way around, the users that are created on our platform through our user onboarding tools uh, you know, can be will be available able to roam onto the open roaming footprint and other roaming partners and providers uh, attached to that network. Um, so yeah, that's that's been our role, and and the network has been successfully tested and proven now. Uh, so we're looking forward to to more more partners to work with, uh, both on the uh, uh, access side and Wi-Fi network side, uh, as well as on obviously through WBA open roaming. Thank you. Fantastic, Jonas. I think this was uh, very clear to the audience and now all the pieces uh, come into, into play. So we heard from, from the city, uh, from a local IT integrator, from a vendor we am. Um, and now uh, with, with Aptilo, we just have the, the big picture on how open roaming was enabled in both the cities over in, in Belgium. Um, and I believe that uh, that working with you, uh, certainly we can achieve a faster pace of, of deployment uh, and really looking forward to what's next in terms of lighting up uh, Europe with, uh, with open roaming. So thank you so much for all of, uh, of you that participated on this, this enablement. Um, and I propose now that we, that we continue. Okay, it's time that we move into the next success stories over in Belgium. So these are the live deployments, both in the city of Olney and Schottfontein. So we are happy to have us uh, uh, providing a speech, the mayor of the city of Olm, Mr. Cedric uh, Halin. Uh, let me uh, just introduce uh, Mr. Cedric as one of the innovation faces uh, for Wi-Fi in, in Europe along with the, the deployment that the city did. They are now uh, looking into leveraging uh, open roaming for enabling uh, new experiences to the citizens and visitors alike. So, Mr. Cedric, uh, allow me just to uh, ask you to provide a few words to our audience. Hello, everybody. My name is Cedric Alain, and I'm the mayor of Oln. Oln is a small village in Belgium in the Wallon region. Oln is a really peaceful place with very old houses made of stone and we are known for the beauty of the countryside and of the village. Oln is also considered as one of the most beautiful villages of Wallonia, so there are tourists and hikers who visit our place. We were very happy to be part of the Wi-Fi for EU initiative of the European Union. We were one of the municipalities who got a voucher from the second call. With the voucher, hotspots were installed inside and outside public buildings. The town hall, sport facilities, park, police station, schools and recreational center are now covered by the Wi-Fi for EU network and thus can benefit from free and public Wi-Fi access. We have very positive feedback from the citizens and visitors, but also from schools and associations. Some months ago, we were asked by our IT partner, who is WIN, to implement with WBA and Cisco a new technology called Open Roaming. With this technology, access to the network is even easier because the user is automatically connected to the hotspot when he reach another location covered by the Wi-Fi for EU network. As a small city, we were really honored to be the first in Europe to deliver such an innovative service to the community. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, quite encouraging to, to see uh, how we are driving uh, innovation um, and looking forward to further endeavors uh, with, uh, with you and uh, the city of, of Olney. Um, so on that note, I think uh, it will be worthwhile now just to see what's behind this enablement and how all these things come to, to life. Uh, and for that, uh, nothing better than hearing from the, the project team involved in this enablement. And firstly, 
uh, I would like to invite the the vendor, the Cisco, uh, impersonated by Bart Brinkham, is the lead engineering for open roaming, and also Mark Grayson, which is the chair of the Open Roaming Standards Group, uh, to guide us through some slides that explain what's behind all of this. So Bart, over to you. Um, thank you very much, Bruno. Um, it's a pleasure to be able to be able to participate in uh, the Wi-Fi for EU project uh, with a technology that's uh, very, very dear uh, to our heart. Um, we've basically been innovating in Wi-Fi onboarding uh, for the last 10 years, and uh, open roaming is definitely kind of a culmination of that. Um, to give you a little bit of context, this kind of started in the early 2010 with a technology called Hotspot 2.0, which was basically, I would say, the father of open roaming, uh, very much focused on kind of service provider uh, based on boarding. And we really, we really, um, uh, we standardized that and we really opened that up with open roaming uh, to many credentials and also made it very, very easy for um, access networks to uh, join, including you know, Wi-Fi for EU networks and you know, Olne and Joe Fontaine are a, a demonstration of that uh, very thing. Uh, we've also invested quite a bit in uh, the device ecosystem, worked with uh, device manufacturers uh, around uh, supporting open roaming natively with their identities and also built SDKs on iOS and Android to enable um, other parties such as yourselves to enable their own apps with uh, kind of open roaming functionality. And, you know, uh, moving forward, also looking into the future uh, with, you know, privacy becoming more and more important uh, and, and vendors, um, uh, device vendors, um, uh, randomizing MAC addresses um, to enable kind of private use of Wi-Fi. Open roaming fully uh, uh, supports that and is a fully private solution that uh, works across a, a, a randomized MAC network. Now, if you look at all of these in the industry sta standards and, and what does that really uh, bring to you? Well, it, it basically brings you a, a, a fully seamless experience, an experience that is smarter because it's policy-based, so you can determine who uh, and when you, uh, you allow on your network. And also very, very uh, important, it, uh, it's a secure ex experience. So moving away from open Wi-Fi networks uh, that are authenticated on portals to 802.1x and secure-based uh, uh, authentication. That enables you to deliver a number of uh, outcomes, such as you know, seamless onboarding, obviously, but also because the onboarding happens with um, uh, an identity, it delivers the access networks um, uh, valuable insights. It can help service provider enhance uh, indoor coverage through uh, Wi-Fi. It can help enterprises provide simplified and secure uh, wireless onboarding, and it can help um, 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 kind of retail and, and hospitality venues with um, acquiring and keeping. Uh, customers uh, uh, adding to uh, the loyalty experience. And then last but not least, it, it can also help in uh, um, uh, automating uh, internet of uh, things. All of this functionality is built into uh, the Cisco stack across our location analytics platform, DNA Spaces, our on-prem Wi-Fi uh, solution in Cisco Catalyst, our cloud-based Wi-Fi solution, Cisco Meraki, as well as our IoT as a service offer in Cisco Control Center. So it's built in and it takes about you know, 10 minutes to activate a service, which we demonstrated um, uh, in two Wi-Fi for EU networks in the commune of Chaufontaine and the commune of uh, Olne. Uh, basically, both of these uh, uh, networks are running uh, Wi-Fi uh, from Cisco uh, with a cloud-based Meraki solution. So basically, uh, together with the customer and our partner there, um, we activated open roaming there in um, the Meraki cloud. Um, as I said, it takes about 10 minutes. Uh, after activating open roaming, uh, these Wi-Fi for EU networks could communicate across the open roaming federation to uh, some of the identity providers that uh, you see on the right here. So 
people with user IDs from these providers were able to uh, roam into um, uh, those uh, cities. And you know, we hope uh, very soon we can also add uh, um, kind of a European identity to that, so we can uh, offer you know seamless and secure Wi-Fi to citizens across the European Union. Bruno, uh, back to you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Bart. Uh, probably one one quick follow-on question is: uh, what, what about timing? You mentioned. 10, 15 minutes. So if an European city wants to join and, and they are using Cisco equipment, uh, is that convertible to um, any city in, in the near future? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to turn on. Any city that has Cisco equipment um, can turn this on in uh, a matter of minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Good to to hear. Yeah, I think probably it's also uh, interesting that we bring the the industry perspective and and, and the share of open roaming uh, standards in the double bay, Mark Grayson. Uh, so, Mark, especially in Europe, I think privacy, GDPR, uh, TCNCs, it's taken very seriously. So, you we mentioned the legal framework. Um, can you share a bit how, how you believe that legal framework really solves this problem for Europe and uh, how we can scale it? Yeah, thanks, Bruno. Um, you're right. We often, you know, jump straight into the technology, but candidly, the Open Roaming Federation is built on a, a foundation of, of um, legal agreements. And as you say, th those agreements include federation-wide agreements in terms of a privacy policy, which means that any user who is using the service is uh, it's very transparent in terms of the use of, of PII across the federation. And indeed, as a baseline, users are anonymous within the federation. There is no requirement to exchange permanent identifiers as part of the exchange. And indeed, if your outer identifier, if your EAP, is anonymous at Realm, then you will be anonymized and, and therefore that is a, a solid foundation. But equally from a, a, a legal GPDR perspective, PII in terms of IP addresses and MAC addresses are visible to various open roaming participants and therefore the legal framework defines the requirements in terms of handling that PII by all the participants in the Federation. So we have the, the, the privacy statement that all participants need to adhere to. We have the end user terms and conditions, which then give the access networks confidence in terms of uh, what are the, the prohibitions in place from a, an end entity perspective and to really you know, facilitate the seamless and secure onboarding from a federation perspective. So I think it goes hand in hand with the technology. The technology is, as Bart has just showed, uh, is, uh, facilitates onboarding of many users, of many networks into the federation. And the legal framework also enables that quick and easy adoption of this technology. No, yeah, that, that's very clear. So uh, I think what this means for, for, for the city is that both their citizens and the identity providers that Bart has shown on the right-hand side, they will be pre-compliant or, or let's call it GDPR ready. And that's a big advantage, you know, for... Yep, so definitely uh, good news. I would yeah, like. Yeah, you're to... breaking up a little bit there, but uh, yeah. So just to confirm, absolutely, um, you know, GPDR, you know, ready to be operated, a full privacy policy which is published on on the OpenRoaming.org website, so people can get visibility of of how PII is used and their right to to get visibility um, uh, across the different participants in the federation, whether they're based in the EU or candidly when that user is roaming outside of the EU. Okay, no, that's, uh, that, that's great. And thanks for the clarifications. So I'm sure that any uh, European municipality that would like to get on board will get in touch with the with Cisco team and uh, we'll, we'll have the contacts to, to share further. 
Uh, but yeah, I think probably now is a good time that we see all this working live. Um, and we have a few demos for, for to share with the audience. Uh, and for that, I would like now to invite Sebastian Marshall from, uh, from Cisco team that also worked with the local integrator uh, to provide us with some visuals on all of this is happening and how easy it is in terms of user experience. So Sebastian, over to you. Hello, here I'm in uh, the city uh, of Oln, uh, at the location of the primary school of the local village, saint andelin where access point we have seen briefly is installed on the, on the external wall uh, of the building. And from the different phone, we can see that uh, they do authenticate on open roaming without a user intervention. I'm showing the SSID setup page where basically I did not enter any password and so forth. And you see that I receive a correct IP address and I'm authenticated with uh, enterprise uh, level authentication. Hello, I'm here at uh, the beautiful village of uh, Champfontaine, next uh, Sursorama, who is a, a public area uh, of the village where open roaming has been installed. Uh, on the different phone here, we see that I'm simply activating the, the Wi-Fi uh, on both phone and to see directly that the phone uh, do detect and do connect on the open roaming SSID. Uh, uh, on the Samsung phone, it has been provisioned with uh, natively from the Samsung uh, operating system. And on the Apple devices, uh, open roaming has been profile has been installed via an uh, application uh, open roaming. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So with this, I think it's time for, for a wrap up and talk a bit about the, the next steps. Um, mainly, if we look into what uh, was shared today, I think clearly the achievements and, and the end game of this project was to achieve a seamless and secure rooming experience across different municipalities with a fast and reliable authentication schema. So at least I risk saying that, that Belgium uh, is ready for, for business. So we have enabled uh, open roaming in four different municipalities with a mix of vendor OEMs, IT integrators, brokers uh, that were involved in, in each scenario. So if we go from location to location, the user onboarding is simple and straightforward. Uh, there is off-the-shelf profiles available from device vendors, operating system vendors like Samsung or Google, local operators, and also there is the possibility of doing onboarding uh, through a portal for local credentials or any city that eventually also wants to have their own um, identity. Further, I think... Uh, as you heard from our uh, participants, the system is stable. Uh, interoperability works quite uh, quite well in the fast manner. Uh, and even if there is other Wi-Fi footprint uh, and, and other cities that uh, will jump on board and uh, existing Wi-Fi, uh, it easily you know uh, comes into a one global Wi-Fi network as we advertise it. So with this, I think. Uh, we don't stop here, so there is lots of work going on in terms of both the standard and uh, the deployments uh, all over the world. Uh, different uh, cities, uh, venues, operators are doing their deployments uh, across uh, at least four continents. Uh, we are having at least 24 uh, deployments uh, for, for open roaming. Um, clearly, we want to, to grow to all the municipalities in Europe across all the multiple vendors, so reaching the, the 9,000 uh, mark. So also in Spain, working with local authorities, uh, Barcelona, Valencia uh, are already enabled. Uh, examples in, in Japan with, uh, with City Room. So really the, the ecosystem brokers and identity providers are joining forces to make this happen. You can see uh, typical players engaging 
uh, on the on the wireless industry uh, joining forces and uh, and the numbers uh, talk by by themselves so quite excited about all this progress um, yeah, in terms of the next steps, uh, what we do after this workshop, so we would be happy to address any questions, feedback. Uh, we would like to do a call for participation, inviting uh, anyone to join uh, this thread with uh, with proofs of concepts and, and trials that we are driving. Um, also, we'll continue outlining any work items and timeline uh, for integration of uh, open roaming with uh, with any cities, enterprises, or carrier networks and federations across Europe. So again, if you are interested, just contact us here at pmoetablealliance.com, um, and we'll have a project plan uh, sent sent over to to you. Um, yeah, so the process eventually is uh, is quite straightforward. So we just outline here a few steps. Uh, if you go to uh, the website, you will see more details. Uh, on also what was shared here and then couple uh, materials that are useful uh, that can support the, the deployment. Uh, but yeah, by, by any means, uh, if, uh, if you are interested, please go ahead and, and contact us. Um, okay, so I would like to thank all our uh, esteemed speakers that uh, uh, participated on, on today's workshop, uh, to thank also the, the partners that were involved. Um, and naturally the the cities and uh, uh, the mayors that have provided their their perspective and it's always good to have that uh, real uh, experience on on the benefit that citizens will will see. Uh, so with this, I would like to thank everyone for joining us here today and looking forward to uh, future opportunities. Thank you.